Hi, I'm Roger Holscher with Initial Ascent, and this is my 2024 Spring Black Bear Bag Dump. So we're going to start off with uh, the rifle setup that I'm going to use this year. It's a rifle build that I did over the winter time. Um, first off, I guess we'll talk about the rifle cover. This is a new Mealy Freak rifle cover. It's their Pack Connect rifle cover. Um, I don't have the Pack Connect system on right now, but that's going to be going with me. Nice lightweight, keeps all the rain and debris, everything off of my rifle. Keeps everything clean. So it's a 6.5 PRC. I'm shooting 147 grain ELDMs at just uh, just under 3,000 feet per second. So um, this is going to be my second year hunting with 6.5 PRC. Last year I did a 300 WSM, and years past I've done 6.5 PRCs. But it's a 26 inch heavy Palma fluted barrel and uh, chambered by Market Spartan Precision Rifles here in Caldwell, Idaho. Uh, it's topped with, uh, right now currently, it's an Arkin EPL-4, 4-16. Uh, um, it's a Remington 700 action that I've done a lot of modifications to, titanium bolt knob. This is the TI Pro 5 port, um, Sam River Solutions, their NRL Hunter Brake, so it's a uh, inch 200, so 1.2 inch diameter on the muzzle here, tapered down to, I believe it's 920 down here at the taper. Um, other than that, it's in a Graybo Phoenix 2 stock that was sponge painted by them with a Magpul MWOC bipod, Sam River Solutions Arca Rail, and then a MDT three round magazine. And then I'll have two in the short action customs little side holder here. Uh, Magpul sling for attaching my rifle. It's kind of only used to carry it on the, the pack. I don't attach it to the pack. I don't use the rifle cover to attach it to the pack. I sling it over my left shoulder through the initial scent frame. That's the best way I've found to carry it. It leaves you quick, ac quick access to the rifle on your pack and it helps kind of distribute the weight of the way I carry everything in my pack. So that and then I will be carrying a shooting bag um, this is a Armageddon gear pint sized waxed game changer that uh, used to have Git Light fill in it, but I've filled it with something other than Git Light, and it's actually uh, down to just over four ounces for this little bag, so can't afford not to carry it at that weight. Um, other than that, we'll start off uh, then again with my Bino harness. It's a Muley Freak game changer Bino harness um, running the GPO. 10 by 50, the range guide 2800s. It's a range finding binocular. Been using it for uh, about six months now, and it's it's been a really good binocular attached with an Asiac, the bino clamp. For that, I can get all my ranges off of that. Um, I will have actually on the rifle. It's kind of hard to see on here, but I have kind of a makeshift um, bullet drop kind of a turret on here with some tape and some Sharpie that I use um, for NR NRL Hunter. Actually, my dad is still on there for the Hunter, so I gotta clean that off and change it to the new stuff. But with the Bino harness, I carry a Kestrel. It's a 5700. It's the Ford Off version, um, running 147 ELDMs. Matches up really good with the Kestrel, so I can get all my ballistics off my Kestrel if I have time. If I don't have time, I carry a data card back here with all my drops all the way out to 1200 with uh, three different wind gradients on it. So I can have quick data if I need it. If not, if I have time, I get it from the Kestrel or my Hornady Port Off app. Um, wind checker on the side. I still got my stuff in here from NRL Hunter. I don't usually carry a Sharpie, silver Sharpie, but for the Hunter match, it was all right. And I usually don't carry a grease pen, but that's another thing left over from the Arrow Hunter. But I always carry a lens pen and some wind checker in here. Um, a lot of people don't carry wind checker when they're rifle hunting, but it's actually uh, really good to kind of see way the wind's blowing and what it's doing um, for your shooting and not necessarily for, you know, the animal might not smell you kind of thing, more for the shooting aspect of it. And um, in the front, I carry a couple little uh, custom earplugs just in case I will wear a set an orange set that goes around my neck to put in real quick but if those break or whatever I have that extra set 
because that brake is pretty aggressive and I don't want to shoot without it. And here I also carry three extra rounds. So I'll have five in the gun, three on me, and then I actually carry another set of, I think there's 12 in a thing in the bag, and I'll get to that here in a little bit. Um, underneath that, I will have a rat's tourniquet that goes underneath here. I don't have it with me right now. It's actually in my bag, but it'll put here in a little pouch when I go hunting. And a little side pouch here. I always carry, especially during bear season, I always carry a little predator call, hand predator call. You never know when you might have to get a, you know, stop a bear on a hillside or maybe get one to call in. And coyotes are always fun to shoot too. So that in the spring, I always carry it with me, but especially in the spring. Uh, a little clicker for my phone for when I'm getting video through uh, my spot and scopes, some alcohol pads. I don't usually carry these either, but for the NRL hunter having to wipe off the stuff, I still got those in there. Always carry a lighter, a little lighter, some chapstick. The sun beats you down and the, and the wind beats you down up on the mountain when you're glassing. So a little bit of chapstick wrapped in Luco tape, always a good idea. A little Petzl E-Lite. Um, I've actually used this more than I want when you set your bag down and you go do something, whether it's uh, make a stock on something late and you set your bag down and you're walking back in the dark. A little E-Lite's nice to have just to get you back. Uh, let's see here, what else I got? Um, I carry, so this is a right in the rain little pin, little folding breakdown pin. In Idaho, you're supposed to sign your proxy statement if somebody else is carrying back your gear or your, uh, your animal. I've actually had it in the past where I've had somebody take back part of my animal while I went back down to get the rest of it and nobody thinks to carry a pin. So how are you gonna fill out your proxy statement without a pin? And these right in the rain ones write really, really well on the Idaho tags. So carry that, um, a couple extra batteries in here, battery for my rangefinder or the binoculars and then a battery for the e-light and then down here at the bottom i got a little Havilon piranha i've actually had this for probably 13 years it's a little folding uh, scalpel blade knife that i keep down in here um, i've actually used it more than i would like to just in case you you know carry you know, brian barney likes to carry uh when he goes on stocks, he'll carry like a, a game bag, a single game bag down there. So when he kills something, he can go down and start cutting it up. Well, if you don't have a knife with you, it's kind of hard to process that animal. At least you could take one load back to get your pack. So carry that in there for that. And that's, uh, that's about all I have in here. And we'll uh, start moving on to the clothes that I'm going to wear. And then we'll get into some of the other stuff that I got in my pack. So this is the kind of my layering system to start off and what I'm going to wear in. Um, we'll start off kind of at the feet and go up. So the boots I'm going to be wearing are the Shimmix, the Crispy Shimmix. They're a 600 um, insulation on those. They're still muddy from the Arrow Hunter, so I got to clean those. But they do a really good job. I got poor circulation in my feet, I guess. I don't know, my feet get cold really easy. Even in, you know, 30s, I get cold feet. So these have been really nice. I've, and I've worn them in September, and they haven't made my feet super sweaty. I don't have super sweaty feet. I got cold feet. So um, those are what I'm going to be using this year. And I'll have my Laponia 2s as a kind of a backup at the truck if I need them. Um, I wear a little uh, cotton uh, sock liner that's uh, full length because I wear, I think these are the Darn Tough 2012 full lengths that I will wear. And I will carry an extra pair of these into an extra pair of underwear and extra pair of socks. Um, other than that, I won't carry any more extra clothing in. Uh, for a base layer, it's the new Muley Freak Merino that they got. Um, super comfortable. Um, what I like about it is it's it's because of the polyester that he puts in it, it's got some stretch and some give to it. So unlike a kind of your standard Merino that will lose its shape and kind of get baggy really quickly, I've noticed that this thing holds its shape really well. And the hood on its money, it's cut longer so it kind of protects some of your hands from the from the sun too so that's a kind of a 150 weight ish base layer uh, merino from muley freak that i'm going to have um, i will probably wear a black obus 150 um, short sleeve it's i'm not even sure which model this one is i've had it for a little while but 
this is kind of my go-to as well. If it's getting kind of temperatures where I'm going to need to put multiple layers on, I'll put this on first, then this um, Muley Freak, and then I'll go up to my next layer, which is a Cryptek Kronos hoodie. Um, this is a, one of their first-gen Kronos hoodies, but I, I like things with hoods. I, I have a tendency to burn on my neck, especially in the spring, so I like something with a hood, whether I'm just going with the Black Ovis 150 and then the Kronos or having all three of these layered on. Um, something with the hood's nice. Uh, so from those, I got, well, I guess I missed this. So the Petra Gators, I always wear a gator no matter what the conditions are. Some people are like, oh, it causes too much heat. But I've had so many times I've fallen off a deadfall and gotten hit with some some sharp sticks and this has probably kept me from getting impaled and it helps with some tick preventiveness in the spring that ticks are really bad i'll actually coat all of my stuff in uh, permethrin from sawyer so that'll help with the ticks but the gators really help with the ticks and we're going to do a lot of creek crossings and so having these on going to help with the creek and we're going early enough me and chris are going um April 15th, so it's, we're expecting a lot of bad weather, so taking these is a must. And then uh, some Black Ovis Merino underwear that I'll wear, and then I'll have another pair to go to. And my pants, the Cryptic Dalbor pants, these are the Dalbor 3s. Um, been using them for quite a while now. I got the knee pads in them, I really like them, and because of how early it's going to be, we're expecting kind of colder temperatures, so the Dalbor works really good for that early spring, kind of into the October months for, for layering system. And I'll have my puffy and my rain gear and everything in the pack that we'll talk about when I start getting into the pack. On top of that, I, I will carry in Crocs. It's Crocs are a must for me. Uh, they're, they're light, but it's sure nice in the afternoon and the, at night at the camp to take off your boots, air at your feet, and walk around in these, actually shot a bear a few years ago in my crocs from camp so it's a uh, it's a must and creek crossings if it's too high to where i can't you know, i'm going to be over my gaiters and i'm probably going to get wet i'll take off my pants and then wear crocs across creek kind of keeps you from slipping rather than going bare feet so crocs are a must for me now we'll uh we'll pause for a second we'll get into the the pack and what's in it all right, so now we're on to the pack. Um, before I really get to that, I'll talk about this. Um, this is a, a raft that we're gonna do. We have one kind of major waterway way that we have to cross, and this is a Uncharted Supplies Rapid Raft. Uh, it's a 400 pound um, capacity on it. It blows up in less than a minute, and it's just under four pounds. So we're gonna take this in it's not going to be too far from where we're going to park into where we're going to have to cross the body of water. So it's not in the pack, but we are going to cross the body of water with the raft. And I got some oars too. I just don't have them with me. A little four piece breakdown oars, but um, haven't used this yet. So this will be an interesting experience and we'll see how it does. And I'll probably get back to you guys on that. All right, now to the pack. From the back here, this is the cub. Um, I really like the cub it, it goes everywhere with me whether it's on the back of my pack or whether it's on just the pannier um, it's very versatile and it carries all my puffy stuff this is where i have all my puffy gear and i'll lay this down so i can get into it so it comes on and off i've actually changed the buckles on this but that's not surprising if you know me because i change buckles on stuff a lot so Cub, it's nice, compact, and because it doesn't weigh a whole lot, because it's got puffies in it, it being away from the frame and your back, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. I don't feel like it's weighing me back. So in there, I have my puffy jacket. This is the new Muley Freak. There's synthetic puffy. Um, I'm actually very happy with how well this thing packs down for a synthetic. Um, it packs down and it's lightweight. And because it's synthetic, it's gonna hold up a lot better to the weather than a down. And like I said, being as early as we're going, it's, uh, we're expecting a lot of weather. One thing I will note on this, and it'll probably be hard to pick up on camera, 
but they did a good job. I know everybody has probably had their issues with zipping up a lightweight fabric like a, a down jacket, and you always get this little piece caught in the zipper, and it takes you forever to get it out. Well, they put some fabric, I don't even know what fabric, it's almost like a nylon ribbon, ribbon down the whole length of the zipper, so when you attach the zipper together, you don't have to worry about it. You can just zip, and it zips right up. You don't get anything stuck, so happy they did that. A little bit different hood. It doesn't go super far over your face like most kind of hooded jackets do. It stops right here, so if you're wearing a hat or if you're not wearing a hat, it doesn't fall down over your face and you always have to mess with pulling your hood back because it's over your face, but it still covers your ears. And then also in there, I got the Cryptic Sentinel pants. It's their uh, zip-off puffy pants. Reinforced seat, reinforced knees, packs down really well, very warm, wearing these in November. I wear them on the range all the time when I'm shooting, laying down on my knees, shooting different things, and they've, they've held up really well. It is a, a lightweight fabric, so I have caught it on you know fences when I'm crossing fences or things like that. So it's not impervious to damage, but they are very durable compared to some puffy pants that I've worn. Also in the Cub, some glassing mittens. These are the First Light glassing mittens. I don't know if they still make these or not. I've had them for a while, so I don't know. Check First Light's website, but um, little down glassing mittens are really nice when you're spending a lot of time behind the glass, especially in spring when it's cold and windy. Those uh, keep my hands quite warm. Uh, it's Cryptek beanie. I'm not sure what the model is on that, but it's just a standard Beanie from Cryptek, and then uh, a little kind of a neck gaiter face mask. I can pull it up to cover my ears and my nose and my face if the sun's kind of hammering down on us, keep the sun off of my face. I don't want to get sunburned. So that's everything I keep in the cub. And the nice thing too about this is if you carry 65 millimeter spotters, angled spotters specifically, or I've tried, they fit really well on this. So if you need a little bit of extra room for your glass and stuff, Cub's really nice for that. All right, on the back, this is the bow holder, but it can carry a rifle. <clears throat> what I also use it for is for, I take it off and put it on the pannier for my trekking poles and for my um, tripod, things like that. It's a, a lot of multi-use. You can carry your rifle in it and your bow. So it's a useful piece that always stays on there whether I use it or not. And we'll go to the back here. Oops. Actually, we'll uh, actually go to the side. So my trekking poles are on the side here, but I will be using those going in so they won't be on the side. Um, but when I'm not using them, that's where they go in the stretch pocket here on the side. So I've got trekking poles there. And let's see here. I carry a chair. A lot of people uh, don't want to carry the extra weight, but this Helinox Zero chair, or chair zero, it's, I don't know, 14 ounces or something like that. It's, again, light enough to where it's no excuse to not carry it for me. I'm spending a lot of time seating glass and it's a lot more comfortable to sit on a chair rather than a rock. So carry this nice at camp too when you're eating to actually sit down on something. So I carry a chair. Most people don't, but I'm kind of to the age anymore where I care about comfort when I carry about counting ounces. So some people aren't, but your own prerogative. So in the back, a tarp. So this is actually a Big Agnes. It's a ground floor, ground floor for one of their teepees, um, but it's actually cheaper and lighter than some actually dedicated tarps that you can find. So being, uh, I think it's around that 14 ounce mark for this, carry it. We can throw it over us if we're expecting some rain or cover us for the sun. That goes in the back. It's kind of all my my rain or bad weather stuff, it's easy to get to. Um, my initial scent rain cover, always carry this with me. Don't just use it for the rain, use it for dust too. If you're on an ATV, covers your pack, keeps from getting all the dust on your pack. All right, rain gear. This is the Cryptic Juniper Jacket. It's uh, been a really nice rain piece for me. Got hammered with rain last spring, got hammered with rain this fall during elk and deer season. So 
It's uh, held up really well. I really like it because it's got the pit zip so you can dump heat really quickly if you need to because inevitably you're going to be walking in these. We were last year. We had a uh, mile and some change walk back to camp and it was dumping rain on us. So we had full rain gear. Nice to be able to unzip that and dump a lot of heat if you need to. And I'm not carrying a soft shell. I do like soft shells. Um, for some rain protection, if you're not going to carry a rain jacket and you're expecting a little bit of weather, soft shells will work. Um, but this is nice too for a windbreaker, um, like a soft shell would. Pants. Pants are, uh, these ones are a new one for me this year. These are the Black Ovis pants, the rain pants. Um, it's a really interesting material. I haven't used them yet in the field, put them on. They're really comfortable. They fit really nice. These are the large. And for reference, I'm a 33 waist, like a 34 inseam. These large fit me really well over the top of pants. So a layering system going to go on over things. So um, they got a nice stretch uh, waistband, got a buckle system on it, full zips. And they have uh, kind of a three, three zipper system so you can get into your pocket. You can choose where you dump your heat at. Um, so. Pretty nice, pretty nice jacket, or uh, excuse me, pants. Chris will be wearing their jacket too, so it'll be nice to compare that with the Juniper jacket. All right, that should be it, yeah, with that stretch pocket. Yeah, let's see what's on the side here. Tripod. I carry a heavier tripod than most people do. Um, this is a Leupold. It's their Pro Guide. CF 436, so it's a four section leg, 36 millimeter top tube. Um, I put a little bit of rubber wrapped around it. That's kind of for a, a grip and when I'm carrying it, carbon gets cold, my hands get cold, so that helps a little bit there. This is actually a, a Coltac, their data board that's supposed to usually go on rifle scopes, um, but I put it here so I could write notes if I need to as I'm sitting here glassing, if I'm writing down windage. Um, averages and vectors and stuff for the wind, I can write on that or write my data on that and then be able to reference it really quick. On the head, it's a Sunwave Photo, it's their IB30. It's not the best for glassing, as you can see, it's kind of an on-off switch with the lever, but for shooting, it's, it's one of the better ones. It's kind of a knockoff of the uh, anvil head by Really Right Stuff, but it's also only 150 bucks compared to the really right stuff anvil head, and it's uh, kind of a lever system. So not the best to glass off of, but really good to shoot off of. I might end up switching this back out for the loophole, their ball head. And we'll be taking a spotter. You can glass pretty easily off of a spotter from a ball head and just turn it sideways, and you can kind of almost act like a pan head, really, with the ball head with the spotter. Uh, it's the tripod system. I can shoot with it standing up. It's real stable. It doesn't have a center pole, so glassing off of it's a little bit tricky. You have to get real fine with the leg adjustments, but it's doable. And for me, being able to shoot off of it's a, a big thing. I do a lot of shooting off of a tripod, and in the mountains in the steep country, you might not be able to get prone, so shooting off of a tripod is a, is a big plus. Uh, that's all I have on the side. So on the top, let's move it over this way. You might be able to see it better. I put my spotter. There's a dedicated spotter pocket on this, but I put my chair there. I like to be able to access the spotter really easy. So take two buckles off the lid and the spotter's up here, just kind of hanging out, floating above the roll top and the lid. It rides in there really nice. I never have any issues with it falling out. Can, pull the lid down and say it stays there, but it's also really quick to access. This is a heavily used Athlon Aries, their 85 millimeter Aries spotter. It's been really, really good for me. I'm still hit or miss on whether I like an angled or a straight spotter, but this has done really well. So I'm not sure if we're gonna take this or Chris's um, Swirl. And I know everybody's gonna be like, wait, you're gonna consider taking an Athlon over a Swirl, but it's an older swirl. It's still really good glass, but I don't know, particular to my stuff, I guess. So I think that's it on the outside. We'll go over the pouches. So I carry a left or a hip belt, the large hip belt pouch on the left side here because my rifle is going to go on the left side. 
So I carry the water bottle holder here in the dead space on the side and then a handgun. I'll carry my Glock 43 XMOS um, and I'll have, I think it's the 115 grain Underwood ammunition. They're plus P plus um, Lehigh Defense Extreme Penetrators. Um, never, never felt undergunned with that. And a lot of people are gonna say you need something bigger than a nine millimeter, but being able to hit the target counts more than I think than the size of the bullet. And so I'm really good with a nine millimeter. So we're gonna go with that. Um, but in the large hip belt pouch, I carry a, quite a bit of stuff. Oh, uh, in the water bottle holder, I'll have a, it's the GSI Micro Light. It fits really well in that water bottle holder. So I like cold water. So analgene is kind of a, off the table for me. I like cold water, so GSI Micro Light. So in the large hip belt pouch, I have, this is an on glass adapter for digiscoping really quick on and off. It's got my bino one on there right now. I'll show you guys these little quick disconnect. You have different sizes and they range in sizes, but change them really quick. And this pops onto my binos just like that. If I had, if I needed it on there, I swap it off for the one for the spotter. And then I can put this on the spotter real quick. It's some 3D printed lightweight material. So it's really light and it just a lot less bulky than some of the other systems. And then on your phone, it's just a little piece. that's always on my phone case. I don't have to have another phone case. I don't have to take this off. I still have access to all my cameras on my iPhone. And then it's a magnet system that lines up really quick. And so I don't, I've actually caught a lot of, a lot more kill shots with this system than I used to with my old system. All right, also in here, this is what I was talking about, carrying the extra ammo. This is a Coltac. It's their 10 round Hunter, but it was able to get another one on the top and the bottom, so it's 12. So I'll carry, what's there's five on the rifle, three here, eight, so 20 rounds I'll carry, which might sound like a lot, but a couple years ago I sent six at a bear hit him with five of them, so, or no, since seven, I hit him with six, so you might end up throwing some lead, so I carry some extra ammo. And Chris is gonna be using my rifle too, so we're gonna carry one rifle for two of us, so I think 20 rounds is appropriate. So these are the rats tourniquets that I was mentioning. One of these is gonna go in a pouch here on the bottom of my bino harness. And a second one will be in here. So I carry three tourniquets on me. Um, I think you should at least carry two at a minimum, but it's just an extra safety precaution. They don't weigh a whole lot, and three is better than two. And then a little rechargeable uh, headlamp from Nightcore. I don't know what the model is. I've had this for years. Nice little thing for using if I need to. I have another one in my bag that I just will use if I need it, but this is my main one because it's rechargeable. I can recharge it at night or with a solar panel if we need to. All right, that is there. Now we'll start diving into the lid. So in the lid, I carry, and will probably not be in the lid for the duration of everything once they get filled, but my water system. So there are HydroPack Seekers. And I'm gonna try, I've been using the B-Free, but this is kind of Hydropack's model of the B-Free. I'm pretty sure it is a B-Free, just with a little bit different top on it. It looks a lot like it. So that'll be with uh, this one pound dirty, or one liter dirty bag. I'll carry a two liter and then a three liter. Um, I have some cordage on there that I use to hang stuff off of the frame or in camp. So I'll have a total of, well, with the Nalgene, or sorry, with the GSI Microlite, I'll be able to carry at least seven liters of water with me if I fill up the dirty bag. But mostly it'll probably be six, depending on where we're going. Oh, let's see. I don't even remember what brand this is, but it's a little power bank. It's a 3,600 milliamp, so plenty for, we're going out for five nights, six days. So this should be plenty. It's just over a pound. I don't carry anything else. So this will be plenty enough for 
all my stuff. So I'll have a, a Zolio that I'll communicate with my wife. We do a lot of digiscoping, a lot of video and photographs, so using the phone a lot. So I need a lot of power, more than most. Um, again, it's left over from NRL Hunter, so this is kind of helping me clean out my bag. This is just an extra magazine. I probably won't carry that, although I might just in case I drop a magazine and it's not a single shot. Um, I have some extra batteries in here and cables for the, the charger. And then my gloves. On top of the glassing mitts, these are really nice gloves. These are uh, Black Obus. I don't remember what the name is. I didn't cut the tag off, but I've had them for a while and they're really nice. It's their soft shell backed leather palm gloves. Just good for everyday use stuff. Hydration. Um, man, I have a hard time drinking warm water. And so if the water's warm, adding some hydration and, and just adding hydration in the beginning already is good. So I have some elements in here. I have some Warrior Fuel Elevates. Those are really good. I like to kind of mix things up. And then some Strike Force Energy. It's kind of a caffeine flavoring additive. It's a liquid, so it mixes really well and kind of gives you a little extra boost when you need it. This is the lantern I was telling you about, or the headlamp. It's, a, it's an old Black Diamond Revolt. Boy, I think I've had this thing for five or six years, so probably fixing to get another one, but that's, uh, it's got just got lithium ion batteries in it. It can be rechargeable, but I just have the lithium. They seem to last a little bit longer, so that's, that's if I'm gonna, if I know I'm gonna be you know, field dressing an animal, I'm gonna be needing the headlamp for a long period of time. I'll put that on over the rechargeable one. Uh, okay, so this is kind of like my little possibles pouch in here. It's got a lot of stuff that I get to on the daily or, or need. I'm a, a goat knife. This is their skeleton tur, I believe. Um, nice, sharp, holds an edge really well. Keep that up here in the lid, kind of more for admin stuff. I carry a second spoon because I've left a spoon at the truck before and been spoonless, so I carry an extra one. It's a Tokes Titanium, a little folding spoon that stays up there kind of some odds and ends stuff some extra buckles um, a little system so chris has a a sawyer and if i need to squeeze some water through a different filter i got some kind of adapters in here if i need to put it into a, a different bag it makes it easy so i have that uh, a little phone holder for kill shots or uh, kill photos, trophy photos, whatever you want to call them. But it's nice to be able to set this up and use the little clicker that I have in here to take photos when you just got a couple dudes and you want to take, take some trophy photos. And a, a couple zip ties and then some fire starter just to uh, start some fires. That is the uh, pyro putty. Sorry, it's a little winter pyro putty. Uh, okay, Armor Shield wipes. So these things, I don't know if you guys have seen these before, but it's a little puck. So, I mean, it's like a Tums, the size of a Tums. It's a tiny little thing. It doesn't weigh much at all, because what it is, it's like a compressed, dehydrated towelette. And all you do is you pour a little bit of water on it and it expands. I think it's like an eight by 10, yeah, eight by 10 towelette. And it is strong, so wiping off at the end of the day or wiping off you know, at a creek after you kill something, it's a really nice thing to have with you. And there's, and I don't know, there's probably 12 pucks in here maybe, so that's gonna last you quite a while. Armor shield though. Carry a multi-tool, so this will be on my, actually in my pocket or on my pocket. And it's a little skeleton Leatherman, but I keep it in my lid so I don't forget it because I have before, but it's got a knife that I have sharpened if I need it for anything, but it's got a couple little tools in there and a pair of pliers, which I've again used more than I would like to admit. And then, First aid kit and wipes, wet wipes and dry wipes. Carry this, carry the extra weight of the wet wipes. It, you'll, 
you'll uh, have a better experience. Let's just get, say that. So I carry more stuff in my first aid kit than most people will. Um, Tylenol, I get headaches, uh, alcohol pads. Um, this is Ru, I'm gonna pronounce this wrong. Ru, 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 Ru. Let's not forget a good garlicky pesto sauce. <laughs> it's a mouthful if you try to say it. So for blisters and for a fire starter, it's, a, it's wool. Um, so you can rip a chunk off if you need to. I don't want to do it right now, but you can rip a chunk off, put it in the spot that you're getting a blister like you would with some Luco tape, and it sticks to where the blister is on your sock. And so it's not actually sticking to your foot, it's sticking to the sock, and so it's adding that extra layer of protection and padding. Um, helps with blisters, it's really good, and it's dry, so if you need to use it as tender, you can. Uh, let's see some kind of odds and ends stuff in here, some, non some inclusive dressings, Antiseptic wipes, some acetaminophen, got some Benadryl in here, some aspirin, a couple little band-aids, and uh, I think a four by four gauze in here with some liquid skin. Some nitrile gloves, Israeli bandage, or sorry, this is a compression sack, or a com yeah. Vacuum pack Z folded gauze, so it's combat gauze, so it's impregnated with some quick clot. This is clotting agent, so it helps you not bleed out. Some more chapstick with Luco tape, and then some insect spray, keep the mosquitoes off you. Uh, some, uh, I think it's aqua tabs the iodine aqua tabs that are in this. You gotta kind of triple and quadruple bag them because that iodine seeps through these bags a lot and can get over everything. I've done that before. Uh, ratchet tourniquet, it's kind of my third tourniquet that I have. I try to carry multiple different types. Um, we have some videos on that stuff for first aid. Some extra fire starter, I forget the name of these, but it's a uh, Basically an impregnated little cotton stick that you break and, and it lights on fire quite well. Um, mini tweezers, and that looks like that's about it in there. So I carry a lot of stuff, but I know most people say you pack your fears, but I pack things that are gonna keep me alive. And then in the top of the lid in the pouch, um, a lot of people put their tags in here, but I prefer to put kind of a drop cloth um, bag for cleaning up, you know, what you pack in, you pack out. So if I got garbage, stuff like that, whether it's, you know, nitrile gloves or anything, I, I don't want floating around in my pack that are all dirty, bloody. I got little bags in here and a drop cloth so I can lay that down and lay out my meat if I need it to air out and an extra set of gloves. Um, there's a water bottle or water bladder holder in here. I don't have a water bladder in there, but I keep a 55 gallon trash bag in there. Saved, you, saved me before keeping stuff dry in the rain and then um, dropping meat into a creek. If you're gonna be out for a while in an area and there's not a ton of shade and you're trying to keep especially bear meat cold, it'll spoil faster than anything else. So putting your quarters, you know, after you hang them overnight and they can have a chance to dry out in the daytime. You can sink them into a, a creek and keep them cold. So that'll keep you out in the field a little bit longer. All right, last portion is the main bag. And two ways to get into this, whether it's the, the large horseshoe zipper that goes all the way down here or the roll top. Kind of depends on what I'm getting to, whether I go from the top or from the horseshoe zipper. Um, I only have, like I said, we're going out for six nights, but I only have one night of food in here just for uh, kind of showing you guys where I put it. So I put all my food at the top because I'm generally going to get to that through the roll top. So all my food will be here, get into it from the roll top. So from there, as you can tell, there's a ton of room in this. This is the 5K, by the way. I don't think I covered that before. But above that, this is a Z Packs. It's their offset solo. For this whole setup, it's 
24 ounces, something like that. I'd have to check, I can't remember. It's stupid light though. It's a Dyneema, but it's got two poles, eight stakes and all the guy lines. It's got an inner and outer. It's, and it's all compact in here for 24 ounces or something like that. It's stupid light. Okay, food. Um, I generally will not count calories. Um, I carry stuff that I'm gonna eat. I don't wanna carry the weight and not enjoy it when I go to eat it. I know Brady says fuel, food is fuel, not fun, but if you pack it and you don't wanna eat it, sometimes you don't wanna eat it, then you go calorie deficient and then you're gonna have some issues. So I put them all individually in one gallon uh, freezer bags. I usually got some snacks. These ones kinda, this one shakes out to be I think 3,100 calories. It kind of fluctuates depending on if I have, like I have a Alpen Fuel, their granola in here. That's 770 calories. So depending on if I carry one of those or kind of a, a breakfast scramble and different things, like I'll, I'll switch it up quite a bit. So generally between 2,500 and 3,100 calories. Um, I don't need a whole lot of calories. The same day, Chris could probably have 4,500 calories and be trying to steal my food. So if I carry more food, he's just gonna eat it. And then next thing down, going from the top, is my sleeping bag. Um, well, quilt, rather. I've been using a quilt for the last several years, and I don't know if I'll ever go back to an actual mummy bag. This one is, uh, new to me. It's a 15 degree quilt. It's the Stormloft 15 degree quilt from Outdoor Vitals. It's, I want to say it's an 800 fill down, comes with the pad straps, regular length with the pad straps and everything. I think it's around a 24 ounce, but as you can tell, it's been in that compression sack for two days now, I think at least, and it lofted up really well. So love a quilt, but also with a quilt, you're gonna need a good sleeping pad. And it's a Thermarest X-Therm Max is what I have, and I carry their Thermarest, their little pump bag in it, so I never forget it. So in that Thermarest pad, I have an X-Ped pillow. It's their down pillow, um, which is crazy because that shooting bag that I have, I think is lighter than this pillow that I carry. But the Thermarest X-Therm, it's their full size. It's not the mummy size, so it's a full 20 by 72, I believe, on that. But good R value, I think it's a 6.9. So going with a quilt, you lose a lot of the heat coming from the bottom. So having a good R value on your pad is really going to save you on a, using a quilt. I've had some bad experiences once. And that's it. That's it for the main bag, at least. Um, there's a pocket, there's one large pocket in here on the inside, and I do have stuff in there. So I have some dailies, uh, you know, my toothbrush, a little bit of soap, and a little compact kind of a towel in case I want to dry off or clean off. Get rid of that in there. And then some more guy line. Uh, some more fire starter. I actually need to get rid of some fire starter, it looks like. But I carry some super glue in here and some tenacious tape that'll help you fix a lot of stuff. And then I'm debating whether I carry this or not still. It's the flex tail, it's a little pump. It's actually been really nice to not have to pump up your pad all the time. And with this hunt, we're still not sure if we're gonna camp out in one spot and kind of day hunt from there, if we're gonna be packing camp up every day, going through that. And if you have to deflate your pad and then inflate your pad every night, it could get old. And just being able to pop this on my Thermarest and have it filled in a minute and not have to sit there and blow into it, it uh, it's, it's been nice and it doesn't weigh a whole lot. I've stopped counting ounces and how much my stuff weighs, so. I'm bad when it comes to people asking me how much it weighs because if I carry it, I need it and want it, and I don't care what it weighs. All right, now we'll get into what I keep in the pannier. So to get under the pannier, 
loosen up these straps here on the bottom. Pop off your load lifters. And then you can lift this nylon webbing off the back, off the top load lifters. And this folds out of the way. This is also how you take the bag all the way off if you're going to leave the bag in camp and just go out in day mode. So it's super quick to do and I can take this whole bag with all the contents in it that I'm not going to need for a day hunt out from a spike camp and leave all this in camp and then go out in day mode, which is the lid and the pannier and the frame and everything else you see here. The pannier sits back here, nice and neat. Flop it open, glassing pad. Muley Freak glassing pad, I can access it from the side with everything on the bag still and be able to sit down and glass. It's nice because it's got a reflective orange back to it, so it's a kind of a don't shoot me thing. And in the pannier, I keep my kill kit. This stays in here regardless of anything because if I'm going to need my kill kit and my game bags, I'm going to need the pannier, so why not just keep it all together? So it all stays in here. Uh, I'm going to be using the Muley Freak game bags this year, um, at least for the spring. We'll see how they do, but nice material. I think they're going to work out really well in this little bag that it comes with. I have my kill kit. So along with that skeleton tur that I have there, I have the tur, their fleshing blade. So really nice. Bears have really thin skin, so the curvature of this fleshing blade makes it really nice to be able to get a good clean skin off of a bear and not poke a bunch of holes in it. Your taxidermist will love you for a good clean or a good sharp skinny knife. Uh, more armor shield wipes. Like I said, they're lightweight and they're nice for cleaning up. Bears are notoriously greasy and kind of messy. So being able to clean up at the end of the day is nice to have there. Um, with that nitrile gloves, I keep a couple pairs in here. And then the carbon, or sorry, the uh, it's another goat knife. It is the, I forget the name of it, sorry guys, but it's the replaceable blade goat knife. Um, nice, it's got a couple bits that I use often in there. I usually have a blade on there and a sheath, but I left it on the mountain somewhere. I don't know where it went. Either that or my kids stole it, I don't know. A little knife sharpener, touch up the edge, really helps, especially when you're full cape and a bear, you're doing a lot of cutting. And so being able to touch up your knife, a sharp knife is a safe knife. Uh, a little bit, this is a, I forget the name of this line, but it's actually a, impregnated with Kevlar, so it's a really strong, lightweight, in case I gotta be by myself and tie out a, an animal, usually an elk or something like that. Keep a few extra 60A blades in there for the replaceable blade knife. And that's it. So the, the game bags, the Mealy Freak's new game bags, there's I think six, there's, or, no, yeah. Six game bags maybe, we'll see, I can't remember. So they got a, a loose meat bag, which is bigger than most, uh, but it's got a zipper and handles. So fitting big back straps, neck meat, tenderloins, all that in here, you're gonna make it nice to be able to carry it too, carry it that way. So that's all your loose meat. And there's one, two, three, four quarter bags. And then I believe they, this is their head bag. Um, so putting, whether it's the bear head in there or a deer's head, yep, yeah, it's called the head bag. So um, I don't know if I'll take this quite yet. I haven't finalized it, but we'll see. Because generally I'll take a bear, the whole head and the hide, and I'll put it in an actual full-size bag. It'll roll up and put in here just to keep the ticks off of me and to keep the hide under control because it can get kind of a sloppy mess with bear hide and a head if you don't have it in a game bag. So other than that, I think that is all I've covered. If you guys have any questions about any of the gear that I have here, you can hit me up on Instagram, Backcountry 
underscore B-A-B-A -A underscore Y-A-G-A or hit up the initial scent guys and I'll try to reach out to you guys and answer any questions you have about any of the gear, whether it's the hunting gear or the rifle gear. Thanks.